Hi Facebook, Steve Woody here, Online Mastery, and I'm going to do a live session about e-commerce. I'm going to spend 15 minutes. So I'm going to spend 15 minutes on this video, and I'm going to be talking to you all about e-commerce and the things that you need to know if you have or want an online shop. So this is a, a Q&A session, so if there's any questions, please let me know. I'll respond and I'll answer them live on this, um, this Facebook Live. So this is part of a new series which I'm doing. It's called Midday Mastery. So midday, every day, I'm going to be doing a new topic. So if there's anything you want me to cover about online, please let me know and I will do that. But today we're going to talk about e-commerce and specifically the things that you probably aren't aware of. So if you're an entrepreneur or a business owner... And if you have products and services, this really will apply to you, specifically if you want to sell them online. So what a lot of people do, or what I've seen when they start out, is they'll use things like PayPal buttons or you know, they'll, they'll, they'll tell people to um, connect with them via a, uh, a contact form or through their website so that they can take the payment. And whilst that's good because you're getting out there. The challenge it has is that you're kind of a linchpin, you're a bottleneck in your own system. Because if people have to connect with you, then there's only a certain amount of time you've got in that day, right? And so what ideally would be a better process is if people can pay you online and then you get involved in the process. So for example, if somebody has the ability to book an appointment with you and they can check out and they can buy your time if you, have, uh, if you sell your time, for money, then that's absolutely fine. If you have a service, then people booking appointments and paying for it, that's fantastic. If you have um, products, digital products, then it's really good that people can buy that digital product and then get that digital product without having to connect with you. There's nothing worse, and it's, it's kind of expected in this day and age, there's nothing worse than buying a digital product and then having to wait for it. Like We expect it instantly. So if you buy something and then you get an email saying, we'll reach out, like it, it frustrates people, right? Unless they're sort of pre-sold on that notion that it's going to take time. So one of the things that's really important, I find really important, is being able to deliver that service. And again, if it's a physical product, to be able to take that order. And either take that order yourself so you've got those order details, or take the order and then pass it on to a fulfillment company so that they can fulfill that order. Okay, there's nothing wrong with taking an order for a product and then having it sent directly to distribution. So it depends on what you're doing in terms of your products, your services, what you're selling. But these are some things that you need to know. Some things that you need to know if you're going to set up e-commerce. Now, e-commerce, let's just break it down into two sections so it's really easy. I'm not going to use the whiteboard or anything today. Uh, I'm just going to talk about this. So if you've got a pen, paper, you want to take notes. Um, there's two things to consider when you're thinking about e-commerce, and that's you've got the shop itself, your shopping cart, okay, where people can browse, they can purchase, check out, the look, the feel, the functionality. There's the shopping cart. Then on the other side of e-commerce, there's the payment gateway. Okay, so people can browse and go through your shopping cart and then they can check out and they can actually process the payments. You've got your shopping cart and you've got your payment gateway. Now, there are different payment gateways. There's lots of different payment gateways. There are two that I really recommend and I'm just going to cover that first because it's the easiest thing. Most people who are starting out, the first thing they'll do is they'll create a PayPal account and they'll put a PayPal button on their website and that is their payment gateway. PayPal is a payment gateway. So is Stripe. Stripe allows you to take credit cards. And PayPal and Stripe are kind of like the industry standard that people use. So you have PayPal and Stripe on your website. That allows people. If you're in the UK, you can also use Go Cardless if you do like standing orders. The, the great thing about using um, PayPal is although you pay 3.2% standard plus 20p per transaction, in the UK it's instant access. You can get your money out. It's within two hours. It's in your bank. It's there. The thing with Stripe is although it's only credit cards, it's 2.4% plus 20p. And if you're arguing over 2 and 3%, I'm sorry, but business transactions, you need to understand that there are costs involved. Go set up your own payment gateway if you're that bothered about it. Honestly, paying 2 or 3% for a transaction to be able to get that money easily, it's, it's a cost that you should be willing to, to, to pay and you should offset against that. The other thing is go cardless to take standing orders, 1%. They take 1% great service. So you need to consider what payment gateway you're going to use. There's WorldPay, Authorize.net. There's loads of them out there. Loads. You can get lost in thinking about what to use. But PayPal and Stripe, nice and simple. Make sense so far? Post in the comments. Let me know if you can hear me. And again, if you've got any questions around e-commerce, let me know. Um, so that's payment gateway. 
The other side of it, which I really want to talk about, is e-commerce. Now, there's lots of different ways you can set up e-commerce. You can go and set up an account on Shopify, and you can set your shop up, and it's very easy to do, and there's systems there, there's Magento, there's Big Commerce. There's, lo again, loads of options. But for most of you, most of you here on this feed, you will be using something like WordPress, okay? And if you have a WordPress website, you can set up a shopping cart or e-commerce sh e shopping cart called WooCommerce. Now, WooCommerce was originally owned by a company called WooThemes. WordPress have bought them out. So now WordPress and uh, e um, WooCommerce, they're, they're owned by the same company, by a company called Automatic. And so it's very well integrated. WordPress and WooCommerce, they go together very well. WooCommerce has a lot of additional functionality and options, but it's not the only option. There's other plugins like that you can plug into your site to get e-commerce functionality. You can use easy digital downloads as an example. There's loads of different options. But overall, for the majority of people, WordPress and WooCommerce works really well. Now, if you're using something like ClickFunnels to build your website, you may just need Stripe and PayPal, and you can log that straight into it, and it works for you. It does it all. If you're using like a CRM like Infusionsoft, then you're, they've got their own payment gateway. So there's, depending on where you are, there's loads of different options. But what I really want to focus on in this video is the things that you may not have considered. Okay, so I know I've just given you an overview of e-commerce uh, in, in its basic form, but what I want to talk about are the things you may not have considered, and I mention all of these in my book. So it's going to be a lot easier for me if I just go through this, because in my book it talks about it, but a lot of people, they maybe miss this. So I have a whole chapter here on e-commerce. And some of the things that I talk about and some of the things I mention that you need to know are these days... If you're going to have e-commerce on your website and you're going to be handling order details, customers' information, their name, their address, because most of the time you'll take their address, if you're going to have customer information on your website, then you have a duty of care to protect that information. Like, that is really, really important. And I'll, like, a lot of people take it for granted. Oh, I want their name and email address. Oh, I'm going to get an order. And you, you, like, people just, they, they don't, I don't think they intentionally abuse that trust. But I don't think people are aware of the trust that people are giving you when they give you their details. And so if you ever have a website and you get a developer from a, you know, a foreign country that you've got a good review from a freelancing website and you give them admin access to your website, they can go in and see all of that customer information. So you've got a duty of care to protect your customer's information if they're purchasing from you. And one of the ways to do that is to make sure that your website is secure. And the best way to do that is with what is called an SSL certificate, a security certificate, to make sure that your site is encrypted. Okay, It passes through uh, an encryption so that the information that is sent to and from your website is secure. Now, the great thing about this, because one of the things with uh, SSL certificates is you normally have to pay for them. Now, depending on who you're hosting with, your server where your website sits, they may or they may not allow you to have what is called a third-party SSL, which means you can go to a company, buy an SSL certificate, and then install it on your server. Some people will allow that, but most hosts won't because they want you to purchase their SSL. And the difference is if you go to a third party, you can get a cheap SSL, normally about five, ten pounds a month, uh, a year, sorry. Or if you use Let's Encrypt, Let's Encrypt do free SSLs. It's a massive thing at the moment. It's backed by some huge players. Let's Encrypt are doing free SSLs because they want to secure the internet. So for you to be able to use Let's Encrypt, it's a third party. You would need to be able to install that on your server. Now, the thing is, if your server does not allow that, you can't do that. So you have to use theirs. And most servers charge you about 50 to £100 pound a year for an SSL. So they're ripping you off, but they're doing it because you're on, you've got no other options. They can do it. It's like being on an aeroplane and buying a bottle of water. You're going to pay £10 pound for it because you're on an aeroplane. Where else are you going to get water, right? So SSLs, really, really important to understand that. Now, you don't need to worry about implementation. I don't want to overwhelm you. I'm just trying to give you an awareness of things to consider. Okay, so SSLs is one thing. Another thing to consider, and this is something that's overlooked as well, is what's called cookies. Now, I'm not talking about like chocolate chip cookies, as nice as they are, but I'm talking about 
the things you, you you should ideally if you're online be aware right now of what cookies are it's the tracking code that follows you so when you visit a website they can place a cookie on your computer and they can track you and they can follow you around and retarget you and offer you things so for you to be able to track information what people are doing on your website how they're interacting with you where they're going what they're doing for you to track that information you need to install a script on the computer it's called a cookie or tracking pixel whatever you want to call it now if you're in the EU you actually legally have to have a disclaimer that you use cookies. And most people don't do this. You need to have a disclaimer that says, we are using cookies to track your, uh, what you're, you're doing. Now, I don't know about America and how that's going to affect another place in the world, but in the UK, you, uh, and especially in the EU, that's, that's legal. You have to have that. So it's something else to consider. Uh, another thing to consider when you're talking about e-commerce are your products. Are you going to have digital products or are you going to have physical products? Are you going to have both? Because that makes a difference as well. So let's talk about physical products first because we can deal with that. And that's quite simple. If you've got physical products, one of the first things you need to know is are you going to need the dimensions, the weight? Are you going to need the information, um, the descriptive information around those physical products? So people may want to know that information. If they're going to buy something physical from you. They may want to know how big it is, how much it weighs, how long it's going to take to ship out, things like that. Uh, something else you need to consider is, are you going to fulfill that order yourself or is it going to go to a distribution centre? Because if so, you need to know that you can take the order, and pass that order across and then check up to make sure that order is delivered. You don't want someone to buy something from you and then not be able to send it across uh, to the customer because they're going to get a bit annoyed if they're not getting it. So you need to make sure you've got that as well. Another thing to consider with physical products is, as well as um, the order tracking and things like that and the fulfilment, and things like that that you need to know, is with anything, digital or physical, there's going to be some element of bookkeeping involved. If you're going to have a, 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 a system that sells products for you and makes you money, then you have to report that, whether you want to or not, because a lot of people, when they start out, especially entrepreneurs, they don't declare a lot of what they earn, and I know they don't, but they should. You, you need to declare what you're earning for tax purposes. You need to have accounts you need to know what's coming in and what's going out. So you have to have bookkeeping. And so one of the things that you should really consider is the bookkeeping software you're using. Now, for me personally, I use something called Xero, X-E-R-O. Uh, and that's a really good system. There's fresh books, there's quick, quick books, there's loads of different uh, things out there. But it, uh, you can use Sage. You can even just use Excel to get started. I mean, Excel is a great way to get started. But if you want to automate the process, what was really good is if someone places an order, it will send them an invoice automatically so they have that invoice and then it would forward that information to zero so you're reconciling your accounts without even having to touch anything every time someone places an order on my website it automatically forwards it from my website to my bookkeeping software whenever i'm out and i use my business card i take a picture of the receipt i upload it to zero all my bookkeeping's done i don't have a shoebox of receipts anymore i don't even have receipts i don't keep them and also i don't have to worry about my orders coming in because it's all done saving me a lot of money in terms of my accounting th fees something else to consider so that's something else to look at. So we've talked about shipping. We've talked about cookies. Uh, tax is another one, especially if you've got products. Are you charging tax? Are you charging shipping tax? Are you charging value added tax? Are you charging your country's tax? When you're in um, the environment, that a lot of people in digitally, when you're selling globally, different countries have different tax rates. If you're selling to someone in the UK, you need, you're applicable to UK tax. It doesn't matter if you've got a global business or not. You need to know that you're abiding by the country's laws that you're selling in. So if someone's buying in a country, they need to know that specifically, like, even if I'm buying something from an American website, if I'm in the UK when I buy it, then I'm, I'm I, like, UK law is applicable to me when I purchase online because I'm in the UK when I purchase. So it means that I have to pay VAT, I have to pay tax, I have to pay, um, you know, and so they have to charge for that. And so that's why you'll normally find that there's a percentage added on. So you need to understand that as well. That really comes down to look at your bottom line. It comes down to your profit margins. Are you going to include it, exclude it? So, yeah, if you're selling globally, absolutely. Even if you're selling globally, wherever the person who is purchasing, their laws apply. Now, it's hard to regulate, but it is still regulated, and you don't want to be caught out. And if you're small and you're not really noticed, then obviously you can probably get away with it a lot more, but you still should put good practice into place because as you start to grow and scale, which I'm assuming you want to do, then you don't really want unwanted attention. 
And you want to make sure you're doing everything right because the last thing you want is to get into trouble. So you need to apply, apply the, the logic that whoever is buying from you, the country that they are purchasing from, those are the laws that apply. So if you're in America and you've got an American company and you're selling to someone in the UK, then that person who's buying it, UK law applies to them. Okay, so that's something you need to look at and consider. And there's a lot of stuff around the legal side of it. But then this is, brings me on to another point. Legal pages. Specifically, on your website anyway, you should all have legal pages. You should have a privacy policy. You should have terms and conditions. If you've got affiliates, you should have an affiliate agreement. If you're doing like refunds or commission policies, you should have these documents. There's a really good plugin for WordPress called WP Legal Pages that has templates. They're not legally binding, but it's a good framework to start with. Because a lot of people that are starting out maybe don't have the money to invest in all of their legal documents. But to have something in place, to have something there, and even if it's just a solid page that you have that explains this information. If you're selling dollars, uh, Gal, I'll get, that's a great question. I'm going to come on to currency in a minute because that's a great question. So I'll answer that in a sec. But yeah, so you need to understand legal pages, right? And you need to know that. One of the other things I just want to mention quickly, we've gone through... Um, a lot of that stuff at the moment, and I am just making sure I don't forget anything. So I'm looking through this. Uh, we've talked about the shopping cart. We've talked about some of the e-commerce things. Uh, payment gateways, legal, cookies, SSL certificates, tax rates, invoicing receipts, shopping costs, bookkeeping software. I mean, that's a lot of the stuff that you need to consider. I actually um, was speaking to somebody yesterday who said, how much would it cost to set up a, a, an e-commerce uh, shop? And these are all the things that you need to consider when you're doing that. Also, you need to consider things like your product images, your product description, how you're going to sell it, where you're going to sell it. Is there a shopping cart or is it just a click button that they go through? What's the process that the customer is going to have to go through to check out? Are they going to go from um, an order page to a checkout, uh, to a cart to a checkout, or are they going to go from an order page directly to the checkout? Is there a thank you page? Are they being, uh, is there something that's being delivered? And so there's, there's a lot of things in terms of the journey as well that you need to consider. But the whole purpose of this is you need to be able to track and report what's coming in, what's going out, how much it's costing you. It's a business at the end of the day, right? You need to make money. And the best way for you to make money is obviously to have a centralized system. I like to make sure that whatever e-commerce solution I'm using, that is my hub. That is my central hub where everything works from. My CRM system for my contact management, that plugs into my shopping cart. My bookkeeping software plugs into my shopping cart. My website plugs into my shopping cart. Everything that I've got plugs into my shopping cart is my hub because it's a business. A business needs to make money. And so the only way I can make money is to charge people. The only way I can charge people is through my shopping cart. So my shopping cart is my hub. That's what I use. And everything integrates into that. So this is the central point. So not, I don't have different systems that are all talking to each other. Everything talks to the shopping cart. And the shopping cart deals with it. So that's just to give you an idea. And to go back to Gal, this is a great question about currency as well. What if you're selling in dollars based in the UK regarding tax? Well, yeah, you're going to pay currency conversion and you're going to pay tax on that. So you're going to end up paying twice. It's actually more expensive. To, so here's the challenge. If, if you've got a, a US audience and you're based in the UK, you have two options that I can tell you right now. You can either charge in pounds and risk the American market not wanting to purchase because they don't like the idea of pounds and dollars because obviously it adds more, more cost to it because well, not as much anymore with Brexit, but even still, there's still that whole, oh, it's not my currency. And so there's, there is a real disconnect between um, America and, and the UK in terms of that. But also you have to understand that if you do put your website in dollars to accommodate for the US market, then you're going to get hit in terms of your conversion into pounds and also in terms of the tax that you're paying on that as well. So, I mean, it's you're going to end up paying regardless. And you just need to make sure that you consider whatever your bottom line is, that you're doing it in the best way possible. Um, if you're in a position, and I'm not saying you are in a position to, but if you have... Uh, a US account, then it's better to have it into a U US bank and then use something like TransferWise to make bulk shipments across. That will probably be a better way to do it. But you need to consider how how you're doing it and what works best for you. I, I'm not really here to get into the technical side of that. I'm just trying to create an awareness that you understand that these are things that you need to consider. So, look, I know I said I was going to do sort of 15 minutes here. It's also, it's nearly 20 minutes. These are just some things to consider, okay? If you're going to do an e-commerce website, these are things that you need to know.
There's other things that you need to know as well. You need to have tracking pixels on your order page. You need to have tracking pixels on your checkout page. And you need to have tracking pixels on your thank you page. That way, if you're running any promotion or Facebook advertising or anything like that, you don't want to be advertising to people that have already purchased. So you need to be able to track where they are in the journey so that you can know, one, if they convert. You need to know if they're looking to purchase. If they abandon the cart, you need to follow up with them. If they don't even get to the cart, you need to know why. If they get to the checkout, you need to know that so that you can make sure you're not spending advertising money on people that have already purchased. Okay, so there's loads of things to consider, but don't get overwhelmed by the process. It's simple, but it just needs mapping out. So many people are like, oh, I need a shopping cart. Oh, I'm just going to go on Shopify. I'm going to go on WooCommerce. I'm going to set it up. I'm going to add some products and I'm done. And I never look at the detail behind it. And the reason that I do what I do is because I consider things that others don't. And that's what I'm trying to do here. Just give you that awareness. Now, I don't want it to be overwhelming. Okay? The whole thing here is that you have an awareness about it so you can do something about it. It doesn't mean you need to do it. You can. And by the way, in my workbook, I talk through this step by step. Do this, do this, do this. And I've even got videos that show you how to do it. So if you do want to do it yourself, you're more than welcome to, and I can help you with that. Or make sure that when you hire someone, you ask them these questions. Okay, if you just write these down and ask people these questions, then it's going to serve you a lot better. You're not going to get slapped in about six months' time when something goes wrong, and you're like, ah, shit, I didn't know that. Okay, you've got no excuse. So... Again, I'm going to mention this because I do keep mentioning it quickly. On the 1st, in fact, no, sorry, on the 14th of February, I'm going to be doing a webinar. I'm not posting a link for it yet, but I will have that up for tomorrow. So I'm going to do another Facebook Live tomorrow at 12 o'clock. If there is anything you want me to cover, anything at all about websites, about online, about business, anything about online business that you want me to talk about, Post it in the comments below, say, can you please talk about this? And if there's enough interest and if I think it's relevant, then I will dedicate one of the uh, 12 o'clock um, sessions to this. Uh, I need my audio book, please. Yeah, Jasmine, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to record that at the moment. I'm still doing a few of the, uh, the end sections of that to get it all uploaded and everything. There's been a lot of stuff going on at the moment. The audio book isn't the highest priority right now for me because I'm moving house. There's a lot of stuff going on. And I'm really focusing on getting people into my course. So I'm doing a six-week course that starts on the 1st of March. I'm going to be taking people by the hand. I'm going to be walking them through everything they need to do to plan, build, and promote their business so that they're getting sales. So if that's something that you're interested in, more than welcome to talk to me about it. I'm doing a webinar on the 14th. So it'll be a Valentine's Day webinar. It's about love yourself, love your business, love your clients. So I'm going to create that. And the whole purpose of that is to educate people about all of the things I'm talking about and also to get people into my course. So by the way, talking about e-commerce, I wish I could show you, but look, unfortunately, I'm going to, as you can see it, my battery died. I need to go and put my battery in charge. What I wanted to show you is that we are on the 5th today. It is the 5th of February. And I have so far sold five course places. So I have five people who have registered and paid me to come onto my course. That means, and I just want to put that into context, I've been talking to people. People have been registering to come on to the 1st of March to the course that I'm doing. They have purchased online. There was a button. They clicked the button. They purchased. They checked out. It sent the invoice to zero, and it sent an, an email to me. They got a thank you page with a little video that said, thank you very much. Here's some stuff you need to consider. Now, they're going through this process, and they're waiting for the 1st of March. What that means to me is that I'm charging £1,000 for this course. So it's 997 for people to come through this course with me. That means, just put this into perspective for a minute, I've made five grand this month. Now, I'm not saying that to boast. What I'm trying to get the point across is that, for those of you that know my personal story, my whole personal life is crashing down around me at the moment, and the only thing I can do is focus on my business to make it successful so that I've got this sustainability. The most profitable month I had was December when I made almost £10,000. That was the biggest month I've ever had in my business. In January, I put a Facebook post out and I made nearly four, just under £4,000 in one day. Now, I've made £5,000 in the start of this month, in not even a week. If I keep doing this, and not if I can, because I'm going to keep doing this, this is going to be the most profitable month of my life. I'm not saying this to brag. I'm not doing it to show off. I'm not doing it to say, look at me. The point I'm trying to make is that 
I'm in a financial situation right now. I've put things in place to deal with it, and I know that this works. I've got enough results from clients doing this stuff because they don't have the same financial hang-ups that I've had, and so they've been able to implement it. So I know this works. I've done it time and time and time again. And there are people that can tell you. People, like, if you speak to... One of my clients, I'm sure she won't mind me mentioning her name. If you speak to Molly Bedenfield at Global Angels, when we built their entire online presence, her e-commerce system is intense. She has three different currencies on her website. And depending on what country you're in, you will view any of the uh, products or any of the donations or any of the things that you do on that website. You will view it in that country, in that currency. They also have separate bank accounts in different countries that the money goes into. So to be honest with the whole like e-commerce system, yeah, of course it could be a bit of a mind fuck. There's a lot to consider. But when you strategize it, when you say, do you know what, we need to do this, 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 and this, you put a thing in place, you look at the systems that are available, it's simple. Once it's set up, it's done. You know, if you're going to take deposits, if you're going to take subscription payments, depending on what you're going to do and how you're going to do it, there are things out there that can help you, and it is simply a case of just clicking buttons. The challenge is knowing which buttons to click. As long as you know which buttons to click, then it's going to be really easy for you to set things up to get things working. And I don't want you to get overwhelmed by this. I don't want you to spend too long on this. The system should be set up easily so that you can focus on the things that you need to do. Now I've got my system set up. Now I've got my book. Now I've got my workbook. Now I've got my online course. Now I've got all of my content. Now everything's done. I can focus so solely and specifically on my clients and getting them results. How much money did you earn last month? How much money are you gonna earn this month? What's the difference? How many people have you got in your business? How many people do you want in your business? What's the difference? I can measure that and I can use that because that's my social proof. <laughs> Gal, don't worry about it. Angry faces, don't worry about it. I'm really not worried about it. Although I had a bit of a ding dong with someone last night on Facebook for those of you who so saw it was quite funny. Um, I'm doing what I can at the moment, right? In my business, in my life, I'm doing what I can. I've got a lot of stuff going on, and the only thing I know I can do is focus on what I'm good at. And I'm really fucking good at this. All right, I'm good at this for other people. I know I'm good at it for myself. When I take my own limiting beliefs out of the way of my own personal life, I know this is going to be the best life. This is going to be the, the, the best month of my life. I know it is because I can see it. And I wanted to show you it. I wanted to show you it live. Maybe on another video when we go through this, I'll show you it so you can see it all. Because, like, it's really important that you get this. The things that I'm teaching you are things that I've been learning and going through and working on. And so I, I'm not saying that you need to apply everything that I talk about, but just having the awareness. Like if, you've, if you've got products and services that you're selling, you need to have this awareness. As a business owner, it is your responsibility to be aware of this, to know about this. Because if something goes wrong, there's no one else to blame. All right, or you can you can you can say, oh, it's because of this, or because oh, my developer let me down, or this, or. but at the end, it still stops with you. It's still your problem to deal with. So you need to have this awareness and this understanding. So that's all I'm trying to do is just give you that. If you think it's worth um, sharing or tagging somebody or anyone that needs to know about this, please let them know. Uh, I hope it's been valuable for you. And again, anything you want me to talk about. Anything about online business, post it in the comments. I'm going to be doing another video tomorrow at midday. I would much rather do something that you want rather than me just randomly picking something. Uh, apart from that, have an amazing Sunday. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Uh, Jasmine, thank you. Um, I'm not going to post anything else about The Apprentice at the moment because I know that um, they can get a bit funny about it. I know that you've got to kind of keep it hush-hush, but anyone that knows me... I don't really... Like, here's the thing. I don't really care about The Apprentice. Honestly, I don't care about it. Um, it'll be great exposure for me if I get onto it. Um, I, I went through it last year, and I got through the first round, and the only thing that stopped me was um, the video trailers that we did. I, um, I, I they, they told me to, to pitch my business, but I didn't want to at that time. And so, yeah, there was something there. But I'm going back this year. I've got a very clear mind. I've got my outcome. I know what I want to do. Look, I'll go down there for the day. If I make it through, I'll make it through. I think I'll be really good on TV. I think I'd offer a great rate of viewing rate. Uh, I think I'd be great for the viewers, great for ratings. I think uh, I've got something that Lord Sugar would absolutely love to get involved with. I think it would be amazing for my business and for his. I think it would take it to the next level a lot quicker. Um, but at the same time, if nothing happens, then... I'm not that bothered because I'm still going to do it regardless. I don't need Lord Sugar to be successful. I'm going to do that on my own. I don't need The Apprentice. I don't need... It would be nice to have. I don't need it. It would just be nice to have, so it's something I'm doing. So I'm not going to talk any more about that. Uh, I'm going to wait to see what happens. Um, 
but yeah, let's just have a quick look here in the comments. Uh, you're the best. Thank you, Jasmine. I really appreciate your support, hon. I really do. Oh, and Jasmine, by the way, just so you know, look, I've still got the book that you gave me, which says, those who don't believe in magic will never find it. Jasmine and her mum got me that book when I was speaking at an event in London last week, and I'm really grateful. It's amazing. And I've been using it. I've been taking notes. Look, writing things down. Thank you. Have an amazing weekend, guys. Uh, any questions, post them. I'll come and check them out. And uh, I'll speak to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.